Thanks for listening to Gossip with Celebrity, brought to you by Celebrity.com. This week, we talk about the Royals. We end with our weekly feature, the comments of the week. The stories, photos, and tweets we talk about can be found at Celebrity.com slash podcast under episode 171. Hi, I'm Katie, the founder and editor of Celebrity.com, and I write as Celebrity. And I'm Chandra, I'm the head writer for Celebrity, and I write as Kaiser. So we probably won't have an episode out for a couple weeks because next week is Easter, and then I'm going to be traveling. You know, it's Easter coming up, we're probably going to be off for a couple weeks, it's fine. All right, and I'm traveling, so we have to play it by ear after that. So I watched the new Nicolas Cage movie on HBO called Dream Scenario. He's like this kind of hapless professor and he's showing up in people's dreams and it has a lot of potential but I don't think it lives up to it it was good in so much as you hated Nicolas Cage but I think he's really good at making people hate him like (laughs) no he's like a super talented actor and it kills me that he just does things (laughs) for money or he like he takes the weirdest projects possible he has to do that yeah, he has to do that because he's so broke yeah. ass and he was in so much debt. But like, he really could have been recognized as like one of the finest actors of his generation. I think he will be still. I still think he will be. He can play anybody. He's really, really good. He's just exceptionally good at playing people you hate. And we've talked about that before. Like, if you really hate somebody in a role, that means they're probably good. <laughs> Yeah, I always liked Cage when he was doing, like, he was weirdly effective in, like, romantic comedies, like, lighter stuff. Like, he did that movie with, like, Taya Leone, and he was, like, great in it. Yeah, I was just watching a clip from that. It's like a sliding door situation, Uh or he goes into a different life. Yeah. But, yeah, it was all right. I don't recommend that movie, but (laughs) I'm glad I watched it. (laughs) It made me think. And I saw this super cute movie on Amazon Prime that I do recommend, but it is, it's just fluff. It's called The Map of Tiny Perfect Things, and it's about these adorable high school students who are stuck in a time loop on the same day. It's just like Groundhog Day for Gen Z, you know, but I liked it. I always feel so old whenever I'm watching those teen things. I don't mind it so much, yeah. I talked about on the podcast before I watched the first season of The Summer I Turned Pretty, and I loved it, but I, it made me feel ancient. Ah, But would you recommend The Summer I Turned Pretty otherwise? I tried watching the second season, and I was like, no, I'm totally over this now. But the first season is amazing. Okay. Like, it, that came out a few years ago, and I, I watched it basically over the weekend, and it was just really sweet it's a like really cute coming of age you know kind of has a love triangle with two brothers it's adorable Aw, okay i would watch it i do like high school stuff still it doesn't make me feel that old because of my son like i just think of it as my son as long as it's not <laughs> like you know i don't know how to explain it but i like watching those things well, the B story of The Summer I Turned Pretty is about her mom, like, and her mom's friend. They're my, like, generational peers, and that made me feel even <laughs> older. <laughs> oh, no. I know it. I can't believe my son is, like, so far in college already. It's crazy. So you've been watching tennis? Yeah, my favorite player is Daniil Medvedev, and he made the Indian Wells final this past weekend, and I was obsessed with his run to the final again because it wasn't guaranteed he's just been going on these random runs to the final for months now he hasn't picked up a title or did they not have it yet Uh, no that he didn't win he lost to carlos alcaraz this is like his fifth final that he's lost in a row it sucks (laughs) oh i just want my little octopus to pick up a trophy I knew who you were tweeting about when you just tweeted that random octopus <laughs> gif. I was like, oh, yeah, he was playing tennis. in the final at that moment. So I just have to put a little octopus out there. Maybe he'll win a final. He still has time. Yeah. I mean, he was on an amazing run this time last year, and then it just kind of stalled, and he can't win a final anymore. I don't know. He'll figure it out. And you can write about tennis whenever you want. <laughs> I know you know that, but... This is like a random thing, but 
the actual Jared guy who runs Just Jared, he's obsessed with tennis too. Oh, that's cool. And he cool. actually goes to tournaments and photographs tennis players himself. That's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you're our tennis expert. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm recording this later. We recorded most of this podcast on Thursday afternoon before we heard the news on Friday afternoon that Kate has cancer and is undergoing chemotherapy treatment. We do talk about Kate's cancer diagnosis and her announcement towards the end of our talk on the Royals. Now back to my talk with Chandra. All right, let's talk about the Royals. So last week we talked about Kate's Mother's Day Franken photo, which was like an international scandal at that point. And now we have a new one. <laughs> so <laughs> over the weekend, we got a cover story in the sun, just what sounded like a completely BS story that Kate was seen out shopping with William at a farmer's market on Saturday. And everyone was like, that's crap. You know, the pictures were old. They weren't claiming to have new pictures. And since when do Kate and William do anything together casually or go to a farmer's market? Right. And no one has seen her out and about since last December. In the before times, before all this surgery drama, like occasionally (laughs) we would hear like stories about, oh, (laughs) someone saw her shopping or, you know, someone saw her like go out to eat her to her hairdressers or something like that. Yes. And we would believe that But it's been months months and months since we've heard of anything like that and so it was just like oh randomly you know kate and william they were for sure at the windsor farm store and no one believed it and then 24 hours later tmz in the sun they published the video and (laughs) it was bad so if you're listening to us you've undoubtedly seen the video it's like grainy far away it sort of looks like kate if you squint and she sort of has Kate's build, but she's taller and has a different walk. And it just, it didn't really seem like Kate. Yeah. Her gait was different. Yes. Her legs seemed longer. The woman's proportions weren't Kate's proportions. Kate has a very long torso. Yes. She looked younger. Yeah. And her face was a little different, too. And... No one was really looking at Prince William, but the person who was supposed to be Prince William, they're saying he had thicker thighs, and I don't know. It's just... Maybe he got the BBL. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. He's ridiculous. And the multiple newspapers ran that on the front cover. Like, oh, look, there's Kate. Okay, assuming it is Kate, which... Kensington Palace did not push back on at all. Assuming it was Kate, that looks bad too, because she hasn't done shit, and yet here she is bouncing around, running errands she would not need to run on the weekend. It's insulting to people. It's just very weird messaging. Yeah, she was walking briskly. She didn't seem physically encumbered whatsoever. She was carrying a large, heavy-looking bag. And She would rather do that than attend the St. Patrick's Day parade with the Irish Guards, which is her military patronage. Yes. And she hasn't recorded a video. We haven't seen a candid picture other than a couple really sus car photos. It's just bad. Going back to the paparazzi photos, like, if that was genuinely Kate in the car with her mother several weeks ago, and I believed that it was. I truly believe that that was Kate in the car with her mother. Then she lost a lot of weight very quickly from her face in the video at the farmer's market. Like her face had like thinned out dramatically or the woman's face. Yeah. If that was Kate. Yeah, exactly. Which can happen, you know, cause you can retain weight, water weight and it always shows up in your face you know, when you're going through surgery or you have taken steroids or whatever. But it all seems really weird. Yeah, it does. So that video had a lot of skeptics, you know, understandably. And 
a lot of people wondered, is that really Kate? Associated Press wouldn't even report that it was Kate. You know, they hedged on that because they learned their lesson with the Royals. And even like the Daily Mail is saying that this is a major screw up and that Kensington Palace is, you know, shit in the bed. How you <laughs> want to say it? <laughs> well, so TMZ's like executive producer, this was hours and hours after TMZ published the video. TMZ executive producer was like, actually, I have second thoughts. That might not be Kate. I have questions. And you put the clip of that in, the, in your post about it, too. Exactly. So we're still getting fallout from that Franca photo. And before we got the fake Kate video, Kensington Palace did a story with the Times of London, like royal sources or whatever, again, explaining that Kate edited the photo, that she feels bad about how it was received. She was just trying to make our family look good. And then the quote that stood out that you put in the title is where they called out the press agencies for being hypocrites about the photo being edited. And an insider told them, quote, but in the history of image cropping and photo altering to tell a story, a lot of the reaction from picture agencies was hypocritical. Come on. I mean, like, that's a major quote. It wasn't just from an insider. Like, they said it was from an unnamed Wales advisor. Like, so this is some important, like, probably senior staffer who's saying, I can't believe Getty and the Associated Press killed the image. It's so hypocritical of them. That's PR 101. You do not piss off every major media agency internationally and call them hypocrites for killing your Franken photo. They're North Korea and Iran. That's what we heard from AFP. And Obama's photographer, Pete Souza, posted on Instagram about it, and he made the very necessary distinction that there is a huge difference between adjusting the lighting and cropping a photo and pasting in different people. Like, that's completely different. And that's what they do. Yeah, and that came up again when they were trying to desperately throw the Sussexes into the mix, saying, oh, they edit their photos too. And they brought in, like, portraits taken by genuine photographers, like professional photographers like Misan Harriman and Chris Allerton, and saying, like, no, they edited, they manipulated the photos, too. And both those photographers came out and said, no, we didn't. Here's exactly what we did. We changed the color grade, and we cropped. And that was it. First they went after Harriman, and then they went after Allerton. Harriman handed them their asses, and Allerton did, too. Yeah. And it was, like... Kensington Palace and the British media weren't expecting that. They weren't expecting professional photographers to stand up for themselves and say, no, I'm a professional with integrity. Here's exactly what I've done. And like Misan was like, here's the original image. You can see exactly yeah. what I did. Now let's get Kensington Palace to show their original images. They wouldn't show the Frank and photo original image. Exactly. So... We talked last week a little bit how CNN said that they were going to review all the photos that Kensington Palace submitted to them. And now the photo agencies are doing that. And the newswires are doing that. And one photo that's really bad was released after the Queen died on what would have been her 97th birthday in 2023. She's at Balmoral, like sitting on a couch, and her great-grandchildren are posing around her. That is janky. They pasted those kids in there. So Getty added an editor's note to it. And Reuters has also announced that it's going to update how it vets the images from Kensington Palace after confirming a second altered photograph. So they're basically going to go over everything they give them with a fine tooth comb. Right. And there are so many images that have been manipulated, especially ones, quote unquote, taken by Kate. You know, and I've been putting some of the other photos that I find extremely questionable in all of the stories about this subject. There was one released after Prince Philip's death, which is so janky. <laughs> I don't even think that any of the children were actually in the room with the Queen and Philip. The Queen is holding a baby and her hand looks like it's <laughs> like attached to the baby. <laughs> it does. I was like, where does her hand begin? Uh -huh. There are a lot of bad ones. And they've all come out of Kensington Palace. Like, they're photos that the palace has handed out as, like, oh, proof that 
Philip really loved William and Kate and not Harry and Meghan. And that's the whole point of the Queen's photo that came out last year was that, oh, here's the Queen with all of her white great-grandchildren. Notice the Sussexes aren't included. Yeah, I think one of the Modsies wasn't included, but yeah, point taken. I mean, the fact that they could put those photos together, yeah. we were making fun of them at the time and think that they could pass. Like, Well, and the thing is, is that they did pass because they were meant as family photos telling a particular story that wasn't vital to the nation. Like, it wasn't the future queen and proof of life. It was, you know, oh, here's the queen with all of her, you know, white great-grandchildren. That's cute. Whatever. Who cares? It's not a matter of state. But, like, a missing princess of Wales, a mysterious surgery, no one has set eyes on her, her staff can't find her. Like... Of course that photo was going to be looked at with a fine-tooth comb. That was so dumb. So last week we were talking about the renewed interest in Prince William's alleged 2019 affair with Rose Hanberry. That reached a fever pitch, and Rose's lawyer went on the record to Business Insider and said that the rumors are completely (laughs) false. And other pundits have been defending her and saying that it never happened. The affair never happened. I don't believe that. I think the affair happened. I just think it's been over for years. Yeah, that's more likely. That story you covered today where (laughs) China is noticing stolen, like, loot from them in family photos of (laughs) the, how do you say, the Chumleys? Yeah, the Chumleys. The family that Rose married into. Yeah, Rose and David Rock Savage, that's like their formal surname. They've done a lot of photo shoots because Houghton Hall, I guess that's how you say it, is like a grand estate. They host all these festivals and art shows there. For years and years, they've posed in like Tatler and Vanity Fair and all this stuff. And like they pose within their palatial estate. And all of these photos have been going viral in the past two weeks. And the photos started making their way onto Chinese social media and all these Chinese art historians and I guess just regular historians, they're like, wait a second, those are our missing art pieces. Those should have never been taken out of China. And it's David's family. It's not Rose's family. Rose just married into this mess. Like it's David Brock Savage's grandmother. Oh, and what's up with Camilla wearing a $10 million brooch? (laughs) Like that is some arrogant bitch shit. Like, she's just going on a daily outing, and she's like, look how rich I am, bitches. <laughs> That's like generational wealth on her shirt. Uh-huh. Yeah. She doesn't even look that good to wear it. Like, she's not even dressed up. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, the brooch is beautiful, though. Like, I was looking really closely at the sapphire. It, <laughs> it is gorgeous. But I wouldn't wear it as a brooch. I would wear it as a ring. Anyway. It's some arrogant, oh my gosh. (laughs) She does not give a, she won. She won. Oh yeah, she won. And she's been smug about it ever since. She totally wore it to troll Kate though. They were like, oh, it was a subtle nod to Kate's engagement ring, please. Mm. So also we've been talking about how Buckingham Palace, which is Charles and Camilla's palace comms, has not said jack shit about Kensington Palace screwing this up so badly, but we've heard that they're like, aha, like (laughs) you brought it on yourselves. We're not going to help you, basically. Which sort of reveals the incompetence of Buckingham Palace, too. Like they're so busy being petty and being like, haha, sucks to be you, Kensington Palace. (laughs) (laughs) KP's fuck ups reflect poorly on the entire royal establishment. Only people like us get the distinction. Right. Like, Yeah, it's only people like us and like hardcore royalists who know that Will and Kate have a completely separate operation and office from Charles and Camilla. And a lot of people just think it's all the same thing. It's all the same fuck ups. They think it's happening on Charles's watch. And so it's his fuck up, too, which is sort of true. Yeah, but they're so insulated and stuck in their own world. They don't understand how it looks to the outside world. And they're so petty. They're like, you know, bad news for Kensington Palace is good news for us. And that's not actually the way it's working. No. 
So we did get some good news from the Sussexes because Megan announced her new lifestyle brand. It's called American Riviera Orchard. So far, all she's done is start an Instagram and a website, and she had like a very short, arty video where she's in her kitchen and like in her pantry or something, and that was just on her Instagram stories, and that's it. So I signed up for the mailing list. Whenever they're selling stuff, I'll probably buy something. <laughs> a lot of people are going to buy it. You know, I've been buying the Clever blends. Those are good. Oh, are they? Yeah. The matcha's pretty good, and I would recommend it. Okay. But yeah, so people are happy that Megan's doing something. We've been telling her to cash in, and she, it looks like she's going to do a little something. I believe, I hope, I believe all of the r- reporting that she's going to do a cooking show, that there will be cookbooks and kitchenware and jams. Nice. So. You know um, no way am I comparing her to Paris Hilton, but people love Paris Hilton's stuff. They really like her kitchenware. So <laughs> I'm sure Megan can have a good niche with kitchenware as well. Well, I would assume Megan is hoping for more like Ina Garten. High end. Yeah, high end. But... Not Paris Hilton. But... but yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't a negative comparison. I was trying to say people like Paris Hilton stuff. You know who has a really, like, underrated lifestyle brand and you never really talk about her? Well, she's not really lifestyle. It's more like clothing and accessories and whatever. But it's Jennifer Lopez. Like, her Kohl's line is really good. I don't go to Kohl's that much, but that's awesome. I've bought several pieces from Jennifer Lopez's Kohl's collection, and it's always great. Okay, it's always, nice. like, really cute sweaters nice. and, like, pajamas and stuff. And plus, I love her perfume, and they sell that at Kohl's, too. Oh, people say that's great. Yeah. I've heard good things about that. God, I would love it if Megan had a perfume. Yeah, people would buy that. So we also heard this week that three hospital staffers are under investigation for trying to access Kate's medical records at the London Clinic. We don't have word as to whether they got in or not. I would assume they did. It doesn't seem... Like a legit story, it seems like a cover for something, but we'll see. Yeah, the whole thing feels like an op. Um, yeah. <laughs> it feels like an op by the palace and the media. But I'm not saying it's it didn't happen. I'm sure that somebody tried to access her records. I also believe that some hospital staffers were probably paid to try to access her records. Yeah. By the media, by one of the British tabloids. The fact that we have heard nothing is just a little concerning. It's very concerning. Yeah, who knows what's going on there. So we're recording this on Friday afternoon at 2.37 p.m. Eastern. (laughs) We just got the video from Kate saying that she has cancer. She has abdominal cancer that was found during her surgery in January. And that's why she has been out of the public eye. Well, she didn't like specifically say abdominal cancer. or She just said that they found cancer cells or cancer yes. after the surgery. I guess we can insinuate, but it seems like we should be very clear about what's being said and what's not being said. Kensington Palace briefed in january that it wasn't cancer but they didn't put it on the record maybe they didn't know that it was cancer back then like it's possible they did some kind of surgery to her and then they sent the stuff away and they found out when they sent it away because i've had surgery before and they send it away to look at it to see if there's any cancer does that make sense that makes a lot of sense you would think that that's probably why they were so careful to avoid putting it on the record in the first place. I mean, literally People Magazine, The Telegraph, The Daily Mail, they all got palace briefings that it wasn't cancer, but they didn't include any of that in the statement, the formal statement from the palace. Yeah, it might have been like before they found out that it was cancer, but you they should have, I don't know. I understand what you're saying, that, it, that I understand the timeline. That Will and Kate found out about the cancer later after their palace minions briefed everyone. But they still made the choice to to not put it on the record. We, we hope she's okay. 
a lot of the stuff we were saying, and we hope she makes a full recovery. She says that she's doing chemotherapy right now. We hope they caught it early as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. She's still a mother with three young children. It's sad and devastating, and I understand that they needed a second to figure out what they were going to do and what they were going to tell their kids. Yeah, it has still been, you know, almost three months since we've seen her, and it's still been a PR thing that they were dealing with that got out of hand in that vacuum that was created by her not being seen. Right, and that's the part of it I don't understand. If you say, you know, like, no, seriously, we're dealing with a very serious medical situation. We need some time to, like, process everything. People would have given them space and time. It was all of the, like, weird half-truths and the PR shenanigans and the inability to, like, just put her in front of a camera and thank people for support. I really want to know what happened with that video at the farmer's market. Exactly. I think what happened is somebody else recorded it and then Kensington Palace just let it sit out there and didn't shoot it down. But but yeah, I hope she's okay. And, you know, I think this is probably like you were saying in your post about it. This is probably the last we'll see her for a while, of course. And they're doing exactly what they should have done a while ago. Yeah, I think we should just say that this should have been done in February. Yeah. Do you know how much grace people would have given her if they had done this before all of the PR shenanigans, before they manipulated the photo and all of that? Like, just come out and say, like, we're dealing with something really serious. And it's not about the timeline anymore. Like, she just needs however much time she can get to recover fully. Like, just come out and be vulnerable and say that. Also, now I really do believe she edited that photo. Like, maybe (laughs) she's the one who's been doing it all along. Like, the ones with the Queen and Prince Philip after they died, where they just got cut and pasted on the couches with their (laughs) great-grandkids. She totally did that. Maybe she was really working from bed, but we hope she's okay. And I'm a little salty that it broke on Friday, but that's fine, you know? Well, I mean, like, media analysis-wise, it's really weird that they released the video on a Friday and so late in the day in England. That's when you release divorce news. I'm not saying this, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's a Friday night news dump. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the comments of the week. All right, my comment of the week is from the story about someone trying to convince Getty that Chris Allerton's portraits from Prince Archie's christening that they were edited or manipulated in some way. Allerton said that's completely false and Getty removed the note. Oh, good. And commenter ML wrote, okay, I have no idea who called up Getty, but it must have been someone they believe to have viable information about that photo, right? Presumably not just anyone can alert them that a pic has been altered and Getty will change the status without verifying it first. So if it was, for instance, Kensington Palace, they have just made themselves even more untrustworthy to Getty. That's such a good point. That is a really good point. And that is just like them, too. Like, they cut off their nose to spite their face all the time. Yep. So, and if somebody did edit that photo, it would be them. Like... Well, so... A lot of people were like saying, oh, no, that would be Kensington Palace. But at the time of Archie's christening, that was when Meghan and Harry had their own office. They were already under Buckingham Palace at that point. All right. So I don't think KP would even have access to the portraits before they were released publicly. If someone in Kensington Palace was calling up Getty to say, no, those photos were edited, too. Like, they would have no idea. All right. My comment of the week is on Rosie's post about Kevin James telling Joe Rogan that he lost 60 pounds by not eating for 40 days. Like, I watched a little bit of that, and yeah, Kevin James is not the sharpest tool. (laughs) You know, he really fits with Joe Rogan's whole vibe and audience. So Olivia wrote, 
men, colon, I've invented this cool new thing that solves all your problems. Not only is it perfectly healthy, but it cures all health issues and ages you backwards. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. I call it fasting. <laughs> Women, colon, tomato, tomato, disordered eating, organ damage, neuropathy, electrolyte imbalance, hair and teeth loss, cognitive decline. She went on, she added more, but you get the <laughs> point. Like, yeah, when men do it, it's called fasting or whatever, or hacking, biohacking or something. And women, it's like, yeah, that's an eating disorder, you know? <laughs> like, like, I've never really seen Kevin James in anything. I mean, I know who he is, obviously. But I used to watch those documentaries that Leah Remini made before, like, she left Scientology and oh, everything. Yeah. She was on King of Queens. And, like, those documentaries were so fun. Like, she was such a great documentary subject. But um, Kevin James was always in there, like, saying stupid shit to her. And she was always like, shut the fuck up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> but you could tell they just got along like crazy. But she didn't respect him that much. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> I saw him in that movie, Becky, about the 15-year-old girl. And he's, like, head of the... It's kind of like a home alone with an older teen and this girl Becky really fucks up these white supremacists who try to attack her family <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin James is like the leader of the white supremacists when did this so, movie come out I've never heard of it I think like a few years ago like 2019 or something but yeah he was all right in that and if, okay, I've seen Paul Blart Mall Cop I, I never saw it <laughs> <laughs> I've seen part of it when my kid was little we watched it there was a podcast where they rewatched Paul Blart Mall Cop every year and this group of friends <laughs> talked about it and my kid was listening to it and I listened to it a little bit it was wild <laughs> but yeah Kevin James I don't know what is that saying like when you open your mouth you remove all doubt yeah that you're an idiot or something was that <laughs> That's how I felt watching clips from that show. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Leah Remini put up with him for years and years. So yeah, but you know, he has his niche. And yeah, some people it, really guess. like him. <laughs> so diplomatic. <laughs> some people really like him. Yeah, I mean, I don't have to like everyone. <laughs> That's fine. He has his niche. All right, well, thanks for listening, bitches. Thanks, bitches. Thank you for listening to the Celebrity Podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. If you like us, please turn off your ad blocker when you visit our site. You can text us or leave a voicemail at 434-218-3219. Our music is from AA Alto, Maiden, and via Premium Beat and Sound of Picture. Thanks again. I wish I could find those Leah Remini documentaries because they were so much fun. She did one when she got married and then when she was pregnant. Oh, nice. And when she was pregnant, she was so over everything. And, like, Kevin would, like, come up to her and be like, you're glowing, honey. And she'd be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Good for her.